Hello and welcome. My name is Sander Briene. I'm Custom Success Manager for GitLab. And today I would like to tell you a little bit about the GitLab structure. GitLab is structured in uh, groups and underneath groups you have projects. Um, on gitlab.com you will you will have typically a single top level group uh, that is connected to your license and underneath you have uh, different subgroups and projects. In a self-managed instance you usually have multiple top level groups depending on your structure, but underneath uh, underneath every group you can have more than one subgroup or projects and then underneath you can have multiple layers of subgroups and projects uh, to build an entire hierarchy. Um, along with that you also have topics and topics are a sort of horizontal way of grouping projects together. So projects with the, th the same theme you can connect those uh, in a topic so that you have one overview of all projects that have the same topic or the same, the same theme. Now, to summarize a little bit, um, in GitLab, a project is a core building block where you do all your work, you plan all your work. Uh, within a project, you have a repository. Uh, each project has only exactly one repository, and the repository is where all your um, source files are, and the backend of that is Git. So GitLab is a Git-managed uh, UI. Now, projects and therefore also repositories are grouped in groups and subgroups. Uh, so they are like folders, so to say. Um, and then you have namespaces. So you have normal namespaces and personal namespaces. And namespaces are in fact the, the full name of a group, including their subgroups. Um, and a project belongs to a certain namespace. And the personal namespace is a special namespace where your username is the name of your namespace that you could see as it being a very special top-level group. Um, now, a project it belongs to a namespace, as I said, and uh, within the same namespace, projects must have a unique name, but w in different namespaces, projects can have the same name. So namespace is together with the project name is uh, the unique identified name of that, of that uh, project. Now, then within uh, the repository, you can have ch code changes, uh, and code changes can lead to merge requests. So within GitLab, you can create merge requests. Uh, in other tools, it might be called pull requests. Uh, and a merge request is, in fact, the uh, task of merging a feature branch or another branch into the main or the default branch. Uh, and in the merge request, you capture uh, discussions, implementation details, but also pipeline results, etc. Then you have topics. Uh, as I mentioned pre in the previous slide, topics are a way to group similar projects under the same theme, um, but it's different from labels. So a, a topic is a sort of a kind of label, but then for projects, whereas a label is a, a label that you use for issues and epics. You can also have tags. I didn't put that in here, but to, to complete this part, so topics, labels, and tags, and tags are on commit level. So in a commit in a Git repository, you can name a, give a commit a certain tag name. Um, and that is helpful in, in order to tag specific commits to a release, for example. Now, and labels are, uh, as I said, on issue levels. In, in, in the labels, you have these scoped labels with the double column uh, where you can uh, create sort of workflows within uh, issues. Uh, topics and tags don't have that feature. So a topic or a tag is simply a name uh, for that project or commit. Now, then you have project visibility. Um, there's three types of visibility, public, internal, and private. We've given them all the number. So in, if you would use the API, then you would uh, give, uh, you have to use this number instead of the name. Um, and visibility is based on the access rights of a, of a user. So a user, if it's uh, uh, a public project, an anonymous user without being logged in can see that project. Internal projects, therefore, are only visible to logged in users. And private projects are only visible to uh, approved members. So uh, people that have given specific access to that project or group. 
Um, now, GitLab.com, for example, has this GitLab org group, which is public, and everyone, uh, even without logging in, can see all open issues within uh, GitLab and even uh, can view the source code of GitLab. Uh, within organizations, we often see um, private or internal projects where internal is used in inner sourcing setups. Uh, inner sourcing is sort of an internal open source model and you want to sort of give everyone access to all software in your organization so that you enable reuse. Uh, and with internal projects, internal visibility, you can give any locked in user within your organization access to those internal projects. Now, how does it look in, uh, in GitLab? So let me show you that now. So if you look at uh, GitLab, you will enter here. Um, we have a new search function. Uh, if you type the forward slash, then you get this search area. And here you can go to the admin area um, as well as to other things. Now, if I go to the admin area, you see the overview here with the license details, the user numbers uh, and other details of your instance. Uh, and here you can go to the groups uh, and you see all the groups within the uh, within the instance. Um, these are not per se top level groups. So in this view, you don't see the hierarchy so much. Uh, you see all group names, so all namespace names, I must say. So this is an example of a uh, group, top level group and a sub group. And this is then the namespace of this group. And here you can see per namespace uh, how large it is, how many projects it contains, how many users there are in it, and the visibility level. So this is uh, an uh, internal project, this is a public project, and this is a private project. And from this space, you can also edit and even delete this, uh, this namespace. Now, as an admin, uh, you might be interested in, okay, which group has uh, not been updated or which one is the largest. So you can sort of look at it. Okay, this is a very large group. You can go in and see what's happening there. And you might uh, need to take action on, on this repository. Um, with projects, you might also be interested in, uh, let's say, the oldest updated. So what which project hasn't been updated for a long time? Uh, for example, this one, uh, if I look, it's been two years. Um, so this is a very old project. Last commit was two years ago, so this might be a candidate to uh, to archive. Uh, what you could do is uh, give this project a topic, uh, archive, or a potential archive or something like that, so that you can group all these projects that, that are uh, a candidate for archiving the same top topic, and then later on you can notify all group owners or project owners and then archive these projects as an example use case. Uh, from within GitLab, people are able to browse through the infrastructure, through the hierarchy. Uh, so if I explore the groups in GitLab, uh, you can see a list of all groups and then go through them. And then you see uh, at here with this arrow, okay, this is a uh, structure with many, with more subgroups. Uh, and then you can, now uh, here's, this is the only one, uh, but there you could then um, browse through the entire uh, structure. So different to the admin interface uh, is that this interface has this, this structure in it. Cool. <clears throat> then um, a few considerations uh, around visibility. Uh, uh, if a subgroup has a, a visibility of private, then any groups or projects underneath that subgroup cannot have a higher visibility. So you cannot create a public project underneath a private subgroup because that would show the subgroup to uh, to anonymous people and that's not what you want, therefore this subgroup is private. Um, also, if you want to change the visibility of a group, then you have to make sure that any subgroup or project underneath that group has a, the same or a lower visibility level so that uh, you don't not uh, you don't accidentally um, expose anything uh, that you don't want to expose uh, so as an admin if you want to change the visibility of a project or group you have to make sure that you will you have to follow these rules and then finally um, some recommendations on structuring GitLab now first of all uh, we see that uh, dashboards on group level are uh, showing information 
for the entire structure underneath that group, so all subgroups and projects underneath. Uh, but if you want to have a full organizational view, for example, you want to see all vulnerabilities within an organization, then it would make sense to have a single top-level group for your entire organization, or if you are really a big enterprise uh, for your subsidiary or sub-organization. Um, so that's something to take into consideration. What uh, do you want to see? What information do you want to get from uh, GitLab? And uh, based on that, you need to uh, set up your hierarchy up to the top level group because only on top level group you that's the, the highest level in which you can uh, view grouped dashboard information and the second one is also for larger uh, organizations uh, if you have this role-based access control model mostly in active directory or in ldap then it makes sense to have a separate top level group structure that reflects your ldap uh, group structure uh, and your role, so your role-based access control group structure. Uh, these groups have only uh, subgroups underneath them and no projects. And your organizational structure is organized, organized in a sep uh, separate hierarchy in a different top-level group. And then you link the uh, members of a group under the role-based access control group to the groups or projects in your, uh, hierarch in your organizational hierarchy. Um, each group in GitLab can be referred to with an add mention at and then the group name. Also with memberships, you can add entire groups as a member to your, uh, to your own other group. Uh, that will only add the direct members of that group, uh, but it, it's a very easy way to control who has access to which projects and groups. Now, um, this is just a recommendation. Um, of course, there are different ways to do things, but um, this is how, how we see things work uh, more flexible in the most flexible way. Um, and with that, I would like to thank you all for listening and uh, hope to see you in the next one.